Hi Leo, welcome to SoapQuest. My name is Spence. Welcome in if you're new and welcome back if you're a subscriber. Thank you so much if you are a SoapQuest Synergy subscriber for coming over here, switching channels and subscribing here. I appreciate it if you did that. And if not, then I hope you do. Alright, bringing you your weeklies, Aries through Pisces, all 12. And those are now those two cards, so let's just get one. Right now, I am again, this week, using the Winged Enchantment deck, Oracle deck by Leslie Morrison with artwork by Lisa Hunt. This is for the week of the 14th of June through the 20th. So basically the last vestige of Gemini season and eclipse season for now. We are also coming toward the end of the week. Um, moving into cancer, cancer season, into the official summer solstice, the season of summer here in the northern hemisphere. And then also we will be having um, Jupiter going retrograde, I think, on the same day. So, yeah, that's the week. We're going to start the week, though, on Monday with a bang because we are going to have the second of three major transits that happen this year between Saturn, the granddad, and you're honest, the rebellious teenager. <laughs> Actually, what I see this as is progress in technology, progress in communication, progress in things like clean energy, transportation, cell phones, information, the internet, things like that, very much so. The old way of doing things, being revised, being renewed, being reinvented, invention, inspiration, new ideas, innovation, all of that is at a clash, a little bit of clash. Now, in the macro, we can also see, you know, people in the streets that protest, shake things up, intensified emotions. We can have a rigid ego with the moon in Leo in the beginning of the week. So, I think that we want to remember that we want to change things for the better, not the worse. And changing things for the better starts with being kinder to each other. Because between the two polarities of whatever opposites is a whole lot in the middle of compromise that we can find. Okay, so that's what Saturn actually does teach because Saturn isn't the only planet. Right? There's a lot of other planets all working around in the music of the spheres, helping us. All right, beautiful. Hello, Leo. We have for you the sparrow. I am pulling similar cards that I pulled last week, but in for different signs and interesting energies. Like one of us one week and another one of us another week. So we have the sparrow. The sparrow for you, Leo. So I'm going to read that to you now. Sparrow. Number 32. Number 32, the sparrow. All right, Leo. I am sparrow, the enlightenment of self-worth. I am pride in simplicity and honor in the commonplace. I'm the one standing vigilant. I'm power in numbers and the contentment of being a part of the larger whole. Much of human endeavor thrives on originality, standing out boldly from the crowd. My wisdom encourages the acknowledgement of the role of the community and family to shape your personal destiny. You cannot always fly solo, and you cannot neglect the threads that bind us all together. You are approaching a time that will require a group effort and a need to blend in while fostering your imprint on the world. It is, mighty, it is a mighty gift to flit about the world unseen and a greater gift to know that you have flocks behind you if you need them. You need to pull back, regroup, and find the common ground. You are engaging humanity. You are part of something great. You are open. You are sparrow. I am the enlightenment of self-worth. Engaging humanity, a part of something great, a 
approaching a time that will require a group effort and a need to blend in while fostering your own imprint on the world. Your part in the whole, Leo. Your beautiful, original, amazing part in the whole of everything else that, that's beautiful and amazing, right? Okay, very cool. I'm going to think about that while you think about that. We're going to also pull nine cards from the Ethereal Visions Illuminated Tarot deck by Matt Hughes. Gorgeous deck with the gilding. And I'm going to pull just nine and we're going to talk about the vertical rows and the horizontal rows. And, or horizontal then vertical. <laughs> and then the big picture. Um, while I do this, shuffling just a little bit more for you since I did already shuffle before the video. Would you please take three deep cleansing breaths for me? Nice. All right, bringing down the cortisol, bringing up the serotonin, dopamine. We have the Knight of Wands. I'm going to show you all of these, of course, as we go, but... I'll name them. Knight of Wands, High Priestess, Eight of Cups, Empress, Four of Wands, nice. The Well, wow. The ju Judgment card, Ace of Cups, beautiful. And the Ace of Swords, lovely. Okay, take a couple more deep breaths while I take this in, Leo. And the Wheel of Fortune on the bottom of the deck. Well, times they are a changing. That's what I just heard. You've gone around your, your, your thoughts about something for a long time, about your part and what you can do in things. For some of you, this will involve your home right now. If you're male, this may involve your wife. If you are a mother, then this may involve you at home. This, I'm seeing the mother archetype here. I'm also seeing someone starting something brand new and perhaps going outside of convention enough to start a new path while honoring, honoring the past. Wow. Okay, Leo, first of all, I just, I just need to say, I have a personal message. My, my stepmother, Bobby, uh, was a Leo. And right now, this is making me remember her very much. It's been an, almost a year. She died on June 18th in 2020 because of COVID. So since I'm reading for Leos and all of you out there that have Leo energy, I just want to pay honor to one of my favorite Leos that ever lived, that I knew and loved very much. This for you is progressing yourself into a new level of awareness, awakening, and your soul path. This isn't anything to do with conventional or religion necessarily. I think it has to do with the way you think about it and feel about it. And where you go for wisdom and comfort because that is always a good place. If you have a sacred space, a sacred place that you go, um, wherever it is, whatever it is that you believe in, however you find your comfort, you'll always have that. But you're also developing yourself and learning so much. And right now, I think you're, you're going forward in a new way. And I don't think you're not, you know exactly where it's going to lead you yet. But I think you're excited about it. And I think you're trying to have a lot of faith. And I think that your family is with you. I do. On the bottom of the deck, we have this beautiful Wheel of Fortune. And this is the God Clock. That's what I call the Wheel of Fortune. It's the time clock. 
It's the movement of the planet and planets and stars, their effect on the gravitational fields of every celestial body in the universe and the macroverse and the I could go on and on to the quantum level. That's how I see time. Right? It's completely relative. We used to be flat earthers thinking we were walking along this very linear timeline, past, present, future, until we became round earthers and we got a perspective from the air with the Wright brothers and then the space age and now on Mars. This is a time of learning that is beyond any of our comprehension. In the beginning of the week on Monday, there's going to be a very tense energy. And I think that something could come up and it could affect you on the micro level. So very personally, old way, new way. So if you're a mom, and I'm seeing the Empress right here, so if you're a mother, or a man with a wife at home, whatever, you know, right there. This could be that someone comes to mom and says, oh, well, I'm doing this a whole new way. <laughs> that could happen. So you guys might have some issues this week with kids asking about things, especially if they're leaving home. That might happen. A little emptiness syndrome might be happening, I think, for some of you. I see the Knight of Wands on the top. I see the High Priestess and the Eight of Cups. The Knight of Wands is, all the Knights in the Tarot, by the way, are when something's going along and then changes. This is the movement of change. That's what all the Knights represent. And very often they bring a message to you. You learn something. So that's a reason that things change very often. And the High Priestess is about having knowledge, understanding something on a deeper level, something that you didn't know before or something that you had that you were holding within that you hadn't expressed yet. Either way, something that had not been expressed is probably coming forward being expressed and things are going to change. And with the Eight of Cups, it may be about somebody moving forward, going somewhere. Somebody may be leaving home, somebody may be moving, or you may be saying to someone, I want to shake the dust off and move out of here. I'm getting out of this place, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, so it may be surprising with Uranus, okay? Uranus is the shock and awe planet, surprise. And a square, Saturn, square Uranus, that's tension, and with Saturn, it's restriction and limitation. So this could be an argument about who's going where. With the Empress and the Four of Wands, I'm seeing Mom at home. She's the well. The well is an extra card in this deck. She is the source of all comfort, of all love, and she's there for you, right? So I think that this would be a difficult thing for a mother because... She's always been there for the for the children, and if the children are leaving home or going to college, especially now, that is happening right now, right? It's the time for it. College apps, who's going where, that might be an issue for some of you. And you're wanting someone to stay close to home, it looks to me like, Leo. And they may be wanting to go further away. Um, you know, I think, I think in the end you have to ask yourself, what is it about this independence in this person? Now, if it's not child leaving home or going to college, anyone could be moving anywhere. It could be you wanting to move. But there's an independent spirit here. That's Uranus. That is individuality, thinking for oneself, wanting to try something new, being adventurous. There's nothing wrong with that. Life is filled with things to be, to be learned, to, so many things to see in the world, so many things to do. There's nothing wrong with a little adventure or a little mystery. A little travel. 
I'm seeing this, okay? The Empress is always a time of growth and expansion, and the Four of Wands is about a celebration, so celebrate. Celebrate this week, and be that well of love, that well of comfort, that well, that place, that whomever can always come home to, right? Then the Judgment, the Ace of Cups and the Ace of Swords. This is a brand new beginning in your thoughts and your feelings, a new way of doing something. So you're thinking differently, you're feeling differently, or they are, because you've been woken up. You've had an aha, epiphany moment where you just like, you know what, I really want this new thing. I want it in my head, I want it in my heart, I'm doing it. And boy oh boy is it the right time, Wheel of Fortune. That is what I'm seeing here. So the sparrow. The sparrow is about understanding that community and the people in your life, in your home, the things that are mundane and normal and everyday. They don't lose value because an adventure seeker wants to go away from home necessarily in whatever way this applies to you. It just means that home will always be there. It doesn't mean that it's not respected, loved, or revered. It is. Look at it. It's, it's in the center of this entire life here. It's everything in, in this life that is good. So let's look, at, but you know, but the adventure is still there. Somebody's still going somewhere. All right, 32, Sparrow. Let me just uh, pick up the last couple sentences that, sh that you know, stand out to me. To, to close your video. The enlightenment of self-worth, pride in, simp in simplicity, and honor in the commonplace. I am the one standing vigilant. I am power in numbers and the contentment of being the part of the larger whole. Okay, if this is a kid leaving home and going to college, this they are saying this to you. They knew who they are. That's what you gave them. And they take it wherever they go. The truth of who they are, the simplicity of what they care about, what they know, what they value. Much of human endeavor thrives on originality of standing out boldly from the crowd. My wisdom encourages the acknowledgement of the role of the community and family to shape your personal destiny. You cannot always fly solo, but you can't neglect the threads that also bind it all together in the center of your reading, the Four of Wands. This binds it all together. You are approaching a time that will require a group effort and a need to blend in while fostering your imprint on the world. It, it's going to help if you help them feel confident to go on the adventure, to be the well of courage for them, instead of making them feel guilty for wanting to live their life. This is a new adventure for whomever this is and for whatever it means to you. I hope my allegorical analogy with the, you know, with this reading helps you to get it in your way and apply it to your life. But that's how I'm seeing it and I want to say to you, thank you Leo, thank you so much. Shout out to my passed on Leo mama. I feel you with me. And also, I just want to say with kindness, reverence, and gratitude, I hope you go forward into the week and gain all the wisdom you can on your quest, on your soul journey. And, and I hope that, I hope that it's beautiful for you, whatever the transition's about. All right, you take care, and I'll talk to you next week. Thank you so much, Leah.